morning. I'm glad to see you. If you have some visitors, go ahead and introduce yourself to the place. Now, we tell them we get a little bit radical here at the river, but say the water is fine. You can jump in. Say the water is fine. You can go ahead on and jump in. Hallelujah. You've been waiting on a blessing that seems it just won't come. Doors are shut. Ain't everywhere. And it looks like you are done. But the devil, he is a liar and a deceiver. your neighbor say God is not through blessing you you've been waiting on deliverance that seems it just won't come doors are shut and pains everywhere and it looks like nobody cares but I came to testify to you this morning the devil I said the devil he is a liar and, 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 and a deceit tap your neighbor and say, say God is not true say my my, 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 my God is not through. My God is not through blessing you. And some of y'all may be wondering, have you been fighting this fight too long? And should I give up? I want to say, so never, never give up. Because my God is able. I said, my God is able to. I'm going to say, say, God, it's not true. My, 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 my God, it's not true. Let's see you. And go ahead and testify and say, look where he brought me from. Oh. Say, look where he brought me from. Oh, look, look where, where he brought me from. You know the Lord. Me yes, he did. I say, yes, he did. Solid ground. He He's solid ground. He His name is Jesus. He His name is Jesus. He His name is Jesus. He, he brought me out. He if you don't believe, he I've been redeemed. He you can follow me, me to the Jordan Street.
says, he brought me out. My testimony is, I once was lost, but now I'm found. And because of Jesus, I'm getting better.
Come on, lift your hands all over this house and begin to worship him. Come on, choir, let's worship him just for a moment. How many know that you have to offer God something? The best offering that you can give him is a sacrifice of praise.
so good to me, yeah. I can't tell it all. No, 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 yo. Come on, say for your goodness, yeah. Say goodness. Say goodness. Say goodness. So goodness. Your goodness. You've been so good to me, yeah, yeah. Come on and say praise the Lord. Lord, thank you for your goodness. Lord, thank you for your mercy. Lord, thank you for your grace. Thank you. Come on and lift your hands and let's praise God for the choir this morning. Hallelujah. For your goodness and your mercy. My, 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 my. For your goodness. And your mercy, yeah. yeah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Somebody just lift your hands all over this room and say hallelujah. Just say thank you, Jesus. Say, Lord, I thank you for your goodness to me. Thank you for your mercy toward me. If you hadn't kept me, where would I be? But I decided a long time ago, no matter what I'm going through, I'm going to always bless the Lord. And his praise is going to be continually in my mouth. What does it matter that man are doing something to you? He doesn't have the last say. Tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, God has the last say. And say, as long as I'm breathing, I'm going to bless the Lord in the good times and in the bad times. I'm going to bless his name. I'm going to lift him up no matter what's going on. The Lord is good and his mercy. I said the Lord is good and his mercy. I said the Lord is good. I said the Lord is good and his mercy keeps on delivering me keeps on picking me up <laughs> I want you to get a revelation that he's good I got some saints in here that have been walking with the Lord for a long time and you can say down through the years I said down through the years God's been good to me <laughs> just say I got a testimony I got a testimony <laughs> I don't know about you, but let me tell it. We wrote a song years ago in my group commission that says, if you can't tell it, let me tell it. What the Lord has done for me. Hallelujah. I said, won't the Lord do it? I said, he'll keep you if you want to be kept. I said, he'll bring you through. He'll pull you through. Put your trust in him. Now, if, if you're born again here, just go ahead and just lean over. Just say, lean, lean. Say, I'm leaning on the Lord. I'm going to lean on him in the time of trouble. I'm going to lean on him when things are going good. When everybody seems like they turned their back on me. I'm going to lean on him. Some of y'all should just say, I'm going to... <laughs> Say, I'm going to lean on the Lord. So you put your trust in friends. They'll turn their back on you. How many of y'all ever made a phone call and they say, you caught me at a bad time, I ain't got it. But if you put your trust in Jesus, he will, he will. 
I said, he will bring you out. I said, he may not come when you want him, but he's always on time. He's an on time God. Yes, he is. Anybody know that God is on time? Because he's an on time God. Y'all act like some Pentecostal folks. Y'all act like some folks that have been baptized in the Holy Ghost. Y'all act like some folks that have been dipped in the name of Jesus. Ah, yes, Lord. I ain't going to make you praise him. You got to make a choice. You got to choose to praise the Lord. After all you've been going through this week, the ups and the downs, the highs and the lows, the trouble, people talking about you, folks messing with you on your job, bills coming in the mail, you better put your trust in the Lord. Now, if you really want to praise him, say it like this. Ah, I got to praise, I got to praise, and I can't. I got to praise. Say it. Ah, I got to praise, and I got to praise, and I can't. Say, I got to praise. One more time, say it. scale, we bought it a three and a half. Bought it, bought it a three and a half. But I don't know about you, but when I look like over my life, when God saved me in 1978, I can look back over my life and say, look where the Lord has brought me from. He brought me from a mighty long way. And because of Jesus, because of the Lord, and because of the Holy Ghost, I said, because of the Holy Ghost, I said, because of the Holy Ghost, uh, I'm getting better all the time. Y'all go ahead and settle down. Y'all go ahead and just, y'all don't want to praise him. Y'all don't want to praise him. Y'all don't know. See, y'all don't know what the Lord has been bringing her through. 
And see, if you knew like she knew, I said, if you knew like she knew, you would stand up on your feet and you would lift up your hands and, and you would throw your head back and open up your mouth and say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Stop, stop, stop. Stop, 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 stop. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. You just to slip up both hands. Come on, slip up both hands right now. Just begin to bless him. Bless him. Just begin to bless him right now. Out of all the trouble you had, bless him right now. Just forget about it. Just cast all of your care right now. Just roll the entire load over on the Lord. So, Lord, I thank you. Things have been going well, but I still thank you. They've been messing with me, but I still thank you. I don't feel so good, but I still thank you. When I leave here, I'm going home to some hell, but thank you. So you're still good. You're still good. Ha, though they slay me, though you slay me, ha, I'm going to lift my hands and still bless you. It's not going well, but I'm going to bless you. Because I heard somebody say, it's not going to always be like this. I said, it's not going to always be like this. Because I've lifted my hand unto the Lord.
Bible tells us that Samson was changed into another man in the presence of the Lord. Let him change you. Let him change you. Let him have the hurt. Let him have the pain. Let him have the sorrow. Just say, Lord, here, I'm lifting up to you. Here, you can have it. I, you can have it, Jesus. Go ahead, lift it to him. Say, you can have it. Here you go, Jesus. So I know you'll take care. My job is to praise God in the midst of my dilemma, in the midst of my trouble. Somebody say, feel me again on this Pentecost Sunday. Right now, feel me up again. Feel me up again. Feel me up again. Thank you. In his presence is the fullness. I said the fullness of joy. In his presence. We start out where we know by praising God. And then we slip over into the supernatural. She can do something. Oh, now y'all stop me. Before I start prophesying, stop stop. Y'all stop. Suddenly, the Lord turned the captivity of Jacob. I said, the Lord turned your captivity. <laughs> oh, God, won't he do it? I said, won't he do it? I said, won't he do it? I said, won't the Lord do it? Say, say, say the Lord has already taken care of my problem. I'm going to rest. Until we learn how to rest in the presence of the Lord. Rest that you've given it to him. Rest that he already gave the answer. Your job is to find the answer. And you find the answer by sitting in his presence. How about this? Sitting at his feet. Said, Here I am, Lord. Here I am, Lord. Miracles happen when we all get with one accord. Things change when we forget about ourselves. Forget about trouble. Whatever it is, say, I'll, 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 I'll come back to that. Just let it go. See, as long as you carry your problem, it's yours. And as long as you keep praying the problem, you're going to have a problem. Pray the solution. Find the scripture that has your solution. Hallelujah. My God shall supply all of my need. Anybody got a need today? According to his riches that are in glory, in See why we want to have the glory to come down. Whatever you need has been deposited to you when you're in the glory. <laughs> Whatever you need is in the glory. 
in the Old Testament, they were instructed by Moses to build an ark and to overlay it with gold and put the elements inside the ark. That was the rod that budded. That was the manna in there. Come on, was there anything else in there, y'all? The tablets were inside there. All three of the things that were the elements. And then the presence of God was in there. And he told them that whenever you carry the ark before you, no army can stand or withstand you. What are you saying? I'm telling you, this is my mode of operation. Put me first. And then somebody picked it up and said, send Judah first. So the children of Israel would put the praises out front and they would sing of the goodness of the Lord. They would say, praise the Lord for his mercy endures forever. They would say, praise the Lord for his mercy endures forever. And no army could stand before him. <laughs> Come on, let's get into the word. Today is Pentecost Sunday. It is the 50th day past the Passover. The Passover was the day that Jesus sat with his disciples, the beginning, and the upper room, and they broke bread. And he said, this is my body that will be broken for you. And then at the same manner, he took the cup, and he blessed it. He took a sip and said, this is my blood in the new covenant that I'm going to shed for you. And he said, I'm not going to drink any more of this wine until I see you in glory. And he said, I'm going away, but I'm going to come back. And we have to understand that God is doing everything systematically. He always does what he said he's going to do. God will telegraph what he's going to do. And because he does that, God makes all things work according to his will. Have you realized that you can't win, lose with the stuff you use? You can't lose when God is on your side. But you will lose if you go on your own strength. Turn with me in your Bibles to Romans chapter 4. I know Pastor Reed, and Pastor Reed is so sorry this morning, but he had to be in Boston today. He made a promise, and he had to keep it, so be with us today. And he said, well, Elder Carl, you got it. You got it. You got it. You got it. So I'm going to do my best. Can I, can I, can y'all, can you bear with me? Can you give me a few moments? Romans chapter four and verse number 13 reads as follows. For the promise that he should be heir of the world was not to Abraham or to his seed through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. Now, I know we've heard for years that the promise was to Abraham about all of his children that would become after him. But Paul, the apostle, had a different revelation from God. See, they saw the first fruits in the Old Testament of God's going to give you a place where you can dwell. But that was just a signal on and a sign on the flesh side. Because how many of y'all know that when you live in the flesh, it's going to perish? If you put your trust in your flesh, you're going to have some problems. Because how many of y'all know every moment you're getting older? You don't believe it? Pull out a picture from 10 years ago. You understand, don't understand it? When you get out of bed in the morning and feel them knees. Because the body is getting older. And the Bible says it will get older. So it's not strange that we're getting older. But that's all in the flesh. And so when Abraham had a meeting with God in the tent, he thought God was there to tell him about, I'm going to make your children like the sand that's on the seaside. Oh, look up into heaven, Abraham. I'm going to make your children like the stars. Reminded of the time when my wife and I went to Puerto Vallarta, Mexico. And we went to a place where it was a 
a little show going on, and they cut the lights off. It was out in the mountains on an island. We took a little island tour, me and my wife did. And when we got there and they cut the lights off, we were just sitting there trying to see what was going to happen on the stage. And I made just a little look up in the sky, and I said, oh. And I tapped my wife and said, baby, look at the stars. There were so many stars, there's nowhere in the world you could have counted. They were clusters. It looked like stars with clouds. And we just sat there in amazement. We said, oh my God, we could just stand here and look at the stars. Abraham looked at the stars. When God spoke to him, he said, I'm going to have that many children? Oh my God. And then he kept on. We go with the story. So he says, verse 14 says, for if they which were of the law be heirs, faith is Void. Now, I know Pastor Reed been teaching about righteousness of faith, hadn't he? And so the Bible says, he says, for if they have which were of the law be heirs, faith is made void, and the promise, everybody say the promise, is made of none effect. Paul is trying to show us something. This is the reason why the Jews hated Paul. Because Paul sat in the presence of Jesus and Jesus revealed to him the revelation that had been hid for centuries that God was going to call all men to become his children and give them an opportunity if they would learn this thing called faith. When you hear the gospel message, you can become a son. And he says, Abraham brought the flesh side. But Jesus was the promise of the spirit side. Now, how many of y'all know you are spirit beings? How many of y'all know you used to be lost, but when you came to Jesus, you got found? I heard the song say, I came to Jesus just as I was. Guess what? If you came to Jesus in here this room, you had to come just like you were. Couldn't fix it up. How many of y'all tried to fix yourself up? Couldn't do it. Tried to live right. Couldn't do it. Tried to make yourself more than what God made you. And guess what? You found out you're just a man. Or you're just a woman with some money. Hello? You found out that your money couldn't help you. You found out that your situation in life, your position in life couldn't help you. That you needed a savior to pull you out of what you were in. And so Paul brings the revelation that God meant that he was going to save all mankind. For God so loved the world that he did what? Gave his only begotten son. That whomsoever, say I'm a whomsoever. Believe it on him. Should not perish but have what? I don't know about you. I'm glad I'm a whomsoever. And so he began to unfold the revelation. Now think about it. Abraham sitting in the tent. His name wasn't Abraham. His name was Abram. And God comes to visit him. It says, in a vision, it says, I'm going to make you the father of many nations. He said, Lord, if I'm going to be the father of many nations, you're going to have to promise me to have a child. Because guess what? Me and Sarah ain't had no shiver in our quiver. And if we're going to go any further, you're going to have to stir this thing up. Because it ain't none there. Hello? Now, I notice that you are at the age of how old? Ninety. And you're asking God to give you a sign of promise by letting the shiver be in your quiver. And guess what? God said, I want you to understand. I'll do that, but that's not what I'm really after. See, God has an ulterior motive. And his motive was, I'm going to save the entire world. You just don't know it yet. See, we got to understand that. How many of y'all know there's some prejudiced folk in the world? There's some folk that don't like black folk. There's some folk that don't like white folk. There's some folk that don't like halfway brown people. There's some folk that everywhere you go, the dark ones against the light ones. Come on, somebody. Talk to me in here. We start sizing stuff up because of color. We are so crazy as humans, we even size stuff up by height or by girth. You know what girth is, don't you? Somebody said you used to be you're about as tall as you are wide. But we have all these preconditions about whether we should love somebody or be nice to somebody by what we see. Oh, y'all ain't going to say nothing. The bottom line is God is not after what you look like. God is after who you are in the heart. He wants to know the hidden man of the heart. 
Because if you find somebody's heart, you found them. Well, I have a very simple definition for where your heart is. It is that special place where you make quality decisions. It is that special place where you make quality decisions in your life about yourself and other people. So if you want to know where your heart is, what are you following after? What are you running after? Are you running after money? I didn't even talk about this, but I just, we just here now. I just want to make a few more definitions. What, why, why are you running after women? Oh, suck it, suck it. Why are you running after men? The Bible says that man that finds a wife, not a wife that finds a man. So you better stop looking for your Boaz and let God present him to you. Hello? Is this thing on? Why don't you stop making messes for yourself? I have a wise brother by the name of Elder Larry Reed. He says, every man has got to find his own trouble. And let me tell you something. If you try to fix something that God said you're supposed to be, you're going to have yourself a what? Ishmael. And guess what? He's been fighting against Ishmael. The seed of Abraham been fighting against Ishmael still. But let me get back to the lesson. He says, because the law, verse 15, worketh what? Wrath. And he says, for where no law is, there is no transgression. You can't break the law where there is no law. So guess what? They were living their lives until the law came. Moses came down from the mountain with ten laws. They call it the Decalogue. From every other law, the three, 603 laws came out of that. And somebody said, you know, if, if you want to make some rules, give me ten. Why would you turn ten into 613? You got to keep them all every day, all the time. Because you're trying to do it in your flesh. Trying to do it in your strength. I'm going somewhere with this. Because you can't do it in your flesh. If you could work it out in the flesh, the Jews would have figured it out. But guess what? They can't figure it out. Can you imagine growing a mint plant in your backyard? And you got to go out there and count how many leaves is on it. And say you have 75 leaves on it. You got to give 7.5 leaves to the priest. As an offering. Let me tell you something. Away with the old way of doing things. We have a better covenant. Built on better promises. And we have a covenant keeper. Who will make sure. Everything that he promised you. Is going to come to pass in your life. And all you got to do is read the word. And put your trust in the Lord. Let's get back to the lesson. He said. Therefore, it is of faith, verse 16, that it might be by grace to the end, the promise might be sure to all the seed. Not to that only which is of the law, but to that also which is of the faith of Abraham, who is the what? Father of us all. Verse 16 in, 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 in parentheses says, as it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations. Before him whom he believed, even God, Abraham, who quickeneth the dead and calleth those things that be not as though they were. Tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, you may not see it now, but keep on calling on the promise of God. It's going to come to pass. Somebody said, how long do you believe him until it comes to pass? Somebody said, well, how long do you trust him until the feet turn around? You're tired of trusting, you're tired of leaning, then you're going to fail. And Jesus was talking to his disciples. He said, I prayed that your faith would not fail. He didn't say, I have prayed that your praise not, might not fail. Oh, you better get a hold of this. You can praise him, but you, can't, you might not be in faith. You can worship him, but you might not be in faith. How do you know you're in faith? Because I got his word on it. I searched the scripture and he said he made this promise unto me. Remember the first scripture I read? It says, for the promise. 
Everything that God does, he does it by promise. That's why you can't fix something up and melt something, melt something down and make it into something that God said. If he said it, you can place your hat on it. If he didn't say it, now you got you out there on your own. You got to make it come to pass. But if he said it, I can stand on it. If he said it, I can sleep on it. And every time it comes to my mind, I can praise and worship him for what his word says in my life. Because guess what? He's going to make it come to pass because I put my trust in him. Okay? Let's keep going. Now, Genesis says, in 15, you can go over there, right? Genesis 15 and 1, it says, And after all these things, the word of the Lord came unto Abram in a vision, saying, Fear not, Abram, I am thy shield and thy exceeding reward. Now, picture yourself lying in the bed. And you go off into a little trench, and all of a sudden, somebody shows up in your room, and you know it's God. And he says, I am your shield and your exceeding reward. What do you say to that? Yes, Lord, you are. He comes to Abraham, makes this proclamation, and then it goes on with the story. He says, and Abraham said, now he's dreaming, y'all, or having a vision. He said, he said, uh, in verse number 2, he says, And Abraham said, Lord God, what wilt thou give me? Now, ain't it strange that the first thing he starts doing is asking God to give him something because he showed up. I don't know about you, but I'll show, ask for some stuff too. If the king of the universe showed up in my house and said, I'm going to do this to you. I said, hold, oh, wait one minute. I said, Elder Jordan, I got some needs, Jesus. Can we have some other stuff? But we wouldn't ask for nothing crazy because I don't need you to help me buy a Mercedes. I can buy one. Oh, y'all missed a good place to shout hallelujah. Stop asking God to generate stuff for you that you can do if you get up off of your... You just need some cash and a good credit report. In order to get some cash, you got to have a good job. In order to have a good job, you need to go to college. Uh, It's quiet in this Presbyterian church, but we're going to keep moving. He says, and he said, and and Abram said, Lord God, what will God give me seeing I go childless? That man and that woman have been looking for a kid for however long they've been married. Right? But they had no children. So what's the first thing that came to his mind? Lord, you got to give me some seed. You got to give me a child who's going to inherit all this stuff. Or I can't have all of them star children. Somebody say star children. I can't have all of them sand children. Unless you give me a seed. Top of your neighbor, say, neighbor, a seed will meet every need. Oh, you must have a good place to shout. Got that from my bishop. You want God to do something, you got to have a seed, and he'll meet your need. Then, he said, Abraham said, I go childless, and the steward of my house is this Eleazar of Damascus. Over the game of the high priest, Eleazar. Then he says, And Abraham said, Behold, to me thou hast given no seed, and lo, one born in my house is mine heir, if it's born in my house. And behold, the word of the Lord came unto him again. Now he's dreaming or having a vision, y'all. All All this is taking place while he's semi-comatose. It's in his mind. He's imagining. This is in his imagination. See, God will give you vivid dreams. If he has your heart. Are you listening to me? God will give you vivid dreams about what he's going to do if what? He has your heart. What are you, what's the heart? That place where you make quality decisions. Because you made a decision this morning to get up and put on what you put on and came here. Right? And so making decisions and moving on it is a quality decision. So you got to start making some decisions. So he says and goes on and says, And behold, the word of the Lord came to him saying, This shall not be thine heir. So he was working and trying to bring it to forth, the past, but he had an Ishmael. He's trying to help God fix 
what he said he would give you. Oh, come on, somebody. See, when we talk about bloodlines and we talk about promise, you better let God give it to you. Because if you make it, you're going to have to pay for it. Somebody said, if you order it, you got to eat it. Go to this place and take a couple bites out of the steak and say, I don't like it. And send it back. Come on, saints, y'all don't do that. Then he says, and he brought him forth abroad. He said, no, he said, and go back to verse 4. He said, and behold, the word of the Lord came to him saying, this shall... But, the, but he that shall come forth from thine own bowels shall be thine heir. Verse 5 said, and he brought him forth abroad and said, look now toward heaven and tell, and tell, the, come on somebody, and tell the stars if thou be able to number them. And he said unto him, so shall thy seed be. And here's the, script, here's the verse you better catch. And verse number 6 says, and he believed in the Lord. And he counted it to him. Who, who's the he? God said, because you believe me, I've now made you righteous. And I know some of y'all looking at yourselves and you're saying, who, me? You made me righteous? Listen, it's not a work you're doing. It's a work he doing. How many of y'all have been to the tailor or the seamstress? Y'all been there before? You ever been standing there in the mirror looking at it and it didn't fit? And they said, well, that's all right. I'm going to make it fit. <laughs> and after a while, they made it fit. And you came back and tried it on. You said, oh, that looked pretty good. Oh, that's good. And you put it, tagged it, and took it home. God is the architect of your blessing. God is the one that's going to make this thing happen for you. Stop trying to make it happen yourself. Because if you hang your hat on the promise of God, he got to make it come to pass. He got to bring it through. He got to pick you up. He got to do it. Because he made a promise. And if you don't do what he said, you got to say, and they say, Lord, in the portals of heaven, I accuse you for not doing what you said. You think you're going to accuse God for not doing what he said? Absolutely not. Can I go a little bit further? And he said unto him, and he said, and he said unto him, and I am the Lord thy God that brought you out of Ur and Chaldees. I give thee this land to inherit. So listen. The land he was talking to was where they are right now in Israel. Now, this was 4,000 years ago. The name of the place was not Palestine. The name of the place was what? It was a place called Israel where he gave it to them. The Romans, when they conquered it in the first, right before the first century, the Romans named it, named it Palestine. But God said it wasn't Palestine. It was Israel over 4,000 years ago. So what are they fighting for over there? They're trying to take something that God gave them by promise. And guess what? The enemy is trying to take something from you that he gave you by promise. He ain't never sleeping. He always fighting. Doubt and unbelief, trouble. Remember I told you, sometimes you can marry trouble. You can have trouble in your own house and they'll be fighting against you. You jump down, you the quarterback, you say, ha, ha. And the wife jump over the sheep next to you. She say, ha, ha. You can't have two quarterbacks. You got to have one. Oh. Yeah. And guess what? If your husband is preaching the word and living the word, your hut hut don't matter. Now it's real quiet in here. You, if any two of you shall agree, as touching, not touching and agreeing, as touching, they shall have what they want. Say, so guess what? This young lady and I got to be on the same page. Right? No, I ain't sleeping down the hallway. We're going to get this straight right now. You mind. I'm going to do what I'm No, I'm just kidding. You mind and you don't let me do. Got to get on the same page. Do you know when you get in agreement with the word, two of y'all are agreeing. Any two of you shall agree. Listen, you got to tell your whole household and say, if anybody else going, I'm going. If anybody else going to love him, I love him. If anybody going to walk with Jesus, I'm walking with him. And it's really good if you're a man. Because I'm the man of the household. I set the tone. I said how righteous it's going to be. I'm the one that says what's going to happen. I'm the one that's going to back the devil. Go, devil, take your hands off of my house. It's my property. You can't have it. 
You can't have my children. You can't have my sons. You can't have my daughters. I'm not going to let you steal my testimony. <laughs> As for me and my house, Joshua 24 and 15 says, we're going to serve the Lord. We made a decision and we lifted our hands to the Lord and said, Lord, you rule in this house. And guess what? If anything comes to me, I know the Lord got my back. I know the Lord going to fix it for me. He's going to turn it around. So we're talking about this thing called Pentecost. God was talking about saving mankind through the operation of bringing the seed into the earth in the natural. But there was going to be a spiritual thing connected to it. And that was going to be the one who was going to come and he was going to turn the hearts of the children back to the fathers. And he says, I need to have y'all born again. Because what Adam did messed all of us up. We had dead spirits or we had spirits that could not communicate with God. And so when he said, I'm going to redeem mankind, Paul said it was the plan of the Lord to redeem even before the foundation of the world. Now, how did God know it was going to be a mess up? Because he's God. He knew everything before it happened. He sets things in motion. He knows what your heart is and what you're going to choose. Right? So now you need to get your heart fixed. Because if your heart ain't fixed, you will choose the worst. You will choose the bad. Can I go a little bit further? And he said, let's go over here to... Uh, Luke, I'm going to read some scriptures because I want you to Luke 24 and 44. And he said unto them, These are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled, which were written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms. Jesus was fulfilling the scriptures in all three of those verses, or where they are Psalms, in the prophets, and in the book. Of all Moses. And so he says, I, I got to fulfill all these things that are concerning me. Then he goes on and says, Then he opened their understanding that they might understand the scriptures. And he says, And he said unto them, Thus it is written, and thus it behooved Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day. Now, he got up on the third day, y'all. I got to take a little moment to explain this. Did you all know there was a midweek Sabbath, a midweek Passover that started on Wednesday night? It didn't start on Friday, Good Friday, people. And he was crucified early Friday, but they took him out and put him in the grave when the evening was at 6 o'clock, and they put him in the grave on Thursday. So everybody count with me. Thursday, 1. Friday, Saturday. What day did he get up? Got up on Sunday. Because that's what the Bible said. See, if Jesus didn't fulfill the scripture every word, then he might not be real. But he fulfilled it. So don't you let no ignorant folk tell you, well, how come it changes? The, how come Easter changes all the time? Y'all ready for it? We follow the lunar calendar. And the lunar calendar changes. Sometimes it falls, the new moon falls at the end of March, and sometimes the new moon starts in the 1st of April. That's why it changes, my friend. It ain't on the same day because the moon determines. Hello? So for all these people that want to shoot holes in it, you don't know what the Bible says, and you don't know what science says. Because if you watch your calendar, because they got it on your calendar. If, how many of y'all got calendars? You usually get them when you go to, to the funeral home and give you calendars. <laughs> if you look at your calendar, it will say, new moon. How many of y'all have seen a full moon? I mean, I was a little boy. My dad would have all his seeds and his plants and stuff, and he'd be working on them in there, and he was doing it in March. And he'd be planting tomato plants, cucumbers, and, and he'd have them in little pots, the little, what are the little paper pots, and put dirt in them, and he would plant them, and he'd come home from work, he'd get his little thing, he'd pour some water in there, and he'd make sure something. Next thing you know, it's a sprout. But he did that by the farmer's almanac, because it told you when was the new moon. If you want stuff to grow the way it's supposed to grow, you've got to follow the moon cycle. Somebody said, if you cut your hair on the new moon, it'll grow back faster. Now, don't y'all try that. <laughs> 
because the moon determines the tides, the gravitational pull. And guess what? They knew that back in the Old Testament. That's why they had astrologers. Or astronomy. They had all, because they knew and that followed that. How do you think the three wise men knew when Jesus was supposed to appear? They saw the star in the east. And they heard the prophecy that he would be born in Bethlehem. What did they do? They got their gold, they got their camels, and they got on their journey, and they went and followed the star. Why? Because God set the moon and the stars in place, and they do exactly what he says they're supposed to do. Are you listening to me? So a lot of folks try to fool you that, oh, you are off. Y'all don't even know what day the resurrection is is on. Well, we follow, we follow the moon. And that was just the time. And it changes every year. Did I mess you up with that? I don't, I don't think I messed you up with that, did I? And then he said, he opened up their understanding that they may understand the scriptures. And he said to them, thus is it written, and thus it behooved Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead. And that repentance and remissions of sins should be preached in the name, in his name, among all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. And ye are the witnesses of these things. And behold, I send the promise, there it is again, of the Father, which he saith, ye have heard me. For John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost many days hence. Jesus is telling you that the promise that God was talking about when he was in the tent talking to Abraham is that when Jesus was the sacrifice that he was crucified, placed in the earth, rose on the third day, and came back to visit his disciples, he said, remember what I told you. I'm going to be crucified. I'm going to die. I'm going to rise again, and I'm going to go back to glory. Then he says, but I want you to go back to Jerusalem and go up into the upper room and begin to wait. The word tarry means to wait. And they went in the upper room, they began to fast, they began to pray, and as they waited on the Holy Ghost. Isn't it amazing that the, the day that was supposed to be the 50th day, and as they were sitting there praising God and worshiping God, that the Holy Ghost came in like clothing tongues of fire and sat upon each of them. And guess what? They all began to speak with tongues as God, the Spirit, gave them utterance. And they got so full of the Holy Ghost, they couldn't stay up in the upper room. They went down on the street. And began to prophesy about the goodness of God in all the different languages. What are you saying, Pastor? I'm saying the languages that were stolen at the Tower of Babel that made them all one. God said, I'm going to bring it all back together. I'm going to send them the Holy Ghost. They all will begin to speak in the same tongue. Hallelujah. They're going to give me praise and give me understanding. He restored his spirit into the church. And guess what? We don't have to have a box where we put the elements in that we carry around on our shoulders. But if you get born again, you can get, hallelujah, the spirit of God down in your soul. And hallelujah, you'll have a well that springs up in there. This is what Pentecost is about. It's about going back to the top. The word Pentecost means up to the top. We have been brought back to the top. So why do people fight against Pentecost? Because they don't understand. Why do they fight against tongue talking? Why do they fight against us being Pentecostal? Why do they talk about us running and jumping and shouting? Because they don't know their history. If you studied your history, you would know. We're right there in the middle of it. We're right there what Jesus said. So guess what? I'm going to talk in tongues. Because guess what? When a man prays in the spirit, he talketh unto God. And you can tell us that I ain't talking to you. But I'm talking to God. Well, what are you talking about? I don't know what I'm talking about yet because I'm, I'm still a little fresh in it. But when you get over there, you begin to let your mind get free. God will begin to speak to your mind, and he'll tell you what you're praying about. So guess what? I may not know, but I do know this. I have the faith to let my tongue go and pray in the Holy Ghost and say those words, that heavenly language, so the will of God could be done in the earth. So yes, I'm Pentecostal. So yes, I'm speaking tongues. So yes, I run and jump. So yes, I let the Lord use me. Yes, because... Pentecostal. I'm Pentecostal because years ago there was a little black man with one eye that stood outside of a little small church and heard white girls in there praying and all of a sudden they got over to the spirit and started praying in the Holy Spirit. A man by the name of William Seymour. And this man, he wanted to know what this girl was doing and they wouldn't let him come in there so he started led by the spirit and he went to California. And when he got to California, he found a little place down on Azusa Street. Come on, somebody. 
And he went down and rented him a place that used to be a library where they kept horses. But it didn't have any. He got a box and he sat down on his knees and began to pray all day and as long as he could pray. The next thing you know, people started gathering. Next thing you know, people started getting there. The next thing you know, the Holy Ghost started falling. Before you knew it, there was 20 people. Before you knew it, there was 50 people. Before you knew it, there was 100 people. And before you knew it, there was white people. And there was black people. And there was people from all over the earth. And, and folks started coming and getting the Holy Ghost. Then there was a man by the name of William C. Mason. And he came and got the Holy Ghost. And, and I'll tell you something. Everything we're into right now came from the Holy Ghost. Because somebody said, I'm going to pray until the Spirit changes something. I'm going to stay on my knees until the Holy Ghost turns it around. I'm going to pray until God gets ready to lose some people and lose some stuff. I'm going to pray down here on my knees until God gives me the Holy Ghost. And then, as men always do, they got a hold to it and made a magazine. Guess what the name of the magazine was? The Apostolic Faith. And then next thing you know, when they got, God got to doing what he was doing at Azusa Street, you know God always disperses people. When you study uh, biblical theology, it's called the despera or the dispersion. God allows persecution to make people leave their comfort zone. And wherever they go, they begin to preach the gospel where they go. So all of a sudden Azusa Street broke up because God didn't want people to come there and start just worshiping at the horse stable. He wanted to spread out all over the United States. So guess what? Somebody said, we are the apostolic people. We, we're going to go back to Portland. And we're going to have this church. And we're going to call this going to be called the apostolic church. And that's how the apostolic church started. It. Then they said, you know what we're going to do? We, we said we're supposed to be baptized in Jesus' name. So we're going to baptize everybody in Jesus' name. But they didn't understand the old English. It didn't mean baptize in his name. It meant baptize in his authority. What do you mean? He authorized me. He sent me. He placed the Holy Ghost on me. So whatever I do is in the Holy Ghost. Because I'm an authorized dealer of the word of God. He sent me. I'm doing it in his authority. That's what, the, that's what the name means. I come in the authority of Jesus. Right? And here we are. How many days from Azusa Street. And folks are fighting against tongues. They are fighting against the manifestation. Listen to me. In the Bible it's replete with people that when they received the Holy Spirit they did what? Spoken tongues. You will speak when you get filled. You will bubble over when the water gets poured out. It's going to bubble over. How do you know it's the Holy Ghost? Because I'm speaking a language. Hallelujah. And it's a heavenly language. You see? Some of us need to understand that if you keep on following God, you can also speak in, if, if the men of tongues and the men of angels. But if I have not love, it profits me nothing. Listen. Tongues... It's the doorway to the supernatural. You're not praying in the Holy Ghost. You are not over into the supernatural. Oh, the day of Pentecost was about bringing the Holy Ghost here and restoring the voice that made us one. We are one when we receive the Holy Spirit. We're one when we pray in tongues. We're one when we get together. Because he said, Paul said, when we pray in tongues, you're speaking unto God. Isn't that the word? So don't be afraid. Don't make people be you ashamed of speaking in tongues. You're praying your heavenly language. And guess what? It's between me and him. Aren't you glad that you can have something that the Old Testament folk didn't have? They had to make sacrifices. They had to do it on a certain day. But guess what? You can tap into that reservoir down the inside you. Whenever you get ready, you can say, And guess what? When a well starts to bubbling up, oh, beautiful things happen. Anybody ever been in the country and you had a well? And sometimes, well, you, have, you ever seen one of those things where you had to pump it? Pump it, and you couldn't get no water. Pump it, pump it, and somebody said, "You know what? Let me just pour a little bit of water back down in there." And when that water I poured down the spout, it touched that water, and I started pumping it. That grabs it and brings it up. And before you know it, I got a gusher. What are you saying, Pastor Reed? Start out where you go. Start out with what you got. It may be small, but guess what? When that little tongue you got, 
hitched down over there in that well. Come on, son. When you get born again, Jesus said, it'll be like a well of living water springing up to everlasting life. Then he said, if you keep on walking with me, I said over here in chapter John chapter 4, if you keep on walking with me and priming the pump, you'll get over here in chapter 7 where you'll get over into rivers of living water. He didn't say one river, but he said many rivers. Listen, if you want to get over into this Pentecostal experience that God gave to the church, you've got to pray in the Holy Ghost. You're not going to get there unless you do what he said. So why do we fight against the Holy Ghost and tongues so much? Religion. Religion didn't let William Seymour go in there and pray with the little girls. Religion. Religion separates me. Religion sets and separates us. I believe this. Well, I believe he's son of God. Well, I believe he's God. I believe he's all three. Well, he's just Jesus. He ain't the Father, Son at the all same time, is he? You know how many years I argued over that? Then I got married, and my wife, she came from Jesus only. And she said, Jesus is God. <laughs> yeah, he's God. All by himself, he's God. And we went back and forth. And we didn't agree on that, but we agreed on some other stuff. And my wife was like that prophet in the Bible when she kept on walking with me. She took me aside and I started knowing a better way. She don't think you're so smart that nobody can't teach you anything. See, when you think you have arrived, you haven't arrived yet. I'm forever learning, forever growing. And guess what? I can learn from anybody. I can learn from a crazy person if you've got the right information. Tell all, if you got the right information, I can learn from it. Can I go on? And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, and they were all with one accord in one place, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a mighty rushing wind, and it filled the house where they were sitting, and they and there appeared unto them clothing tongues like as a fire, and it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and they began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit of God gave them utterance. And there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men, out of every nation under heaven. And they all heard them speak with tongues. And they came out on the street, and they began to speak Gossialea, tongues from all over the world. And if you were from Spain, they talked in Spanish. If you were from England, they talked in English language. If you were from somewhere else, they talked in that. And you heard the wondrous things of God. It was the work of the Holy Ghost. But it was people who were surrendered. First, they obeyed God. They went back to Jerusalem, and they waited until the Holy Ghost sent them. Some people got called, some people got sent, but most people just got up and went. Got a good idea, and now they're running with it. And Paul said, some have made shipwreck. Because they didn't wait on the unction of the Holy Ghost. Let me tell you something, if the Holy Ghost sends you one somewhere, he's going to supply you. He'll have somebody there to meet your need if the Holy Ghost sends you. So guess what? The most important person on planet Earth is who? The Holy Ghost. So why do we refuse him? It is so hard because you've been in control of your life, your whole life, to let go and let God. Do you know how much faith it takes to let God have it, to let God use you? Do you know how it takes faith to release your tongue and let the Holy Spirit talk through it? It takes faith to do that. But a lot of folks, they don't like to be in control. That's why they have so many liturgies. That's why I had so many made up prayers. They wrote it. We wrote it down. We're going to follow this. And this is what they used to do. We have whole religions that they go by what was written centuries ago. Well, this is how God came in last time. Maybe y'all had it wrong then. Some people want me to wear a robe. Somebody asked me when I wear a robe today. Listen, today is supposed to be the day. Today is supposed to be the day of white. How many of y'all, come on, all the white folks, they got on white. There you go. Some churches... Wear red to signify the blood. Listen, whenever men get involved, you're going to have a whole bunch of stuff. You got to wear a beanie. You got to walk everywhere on Saturday. Come on, somebody. Hello. We had back in 
the 15th, 12th centuries, where people used to get naked down in their underwear and walk through the streets and beat themselves because they're showing piety. If you allow men's religion to get in anything you're doing, pretty soon it's going to be a bunch of foolishness. But we do better when we know better. How many of y'all used to go to one of them churches where everybody drank the same communion cup? You better not drink out the same communion cup today. Because when we know better, what do we do? Do better. I tell you right now, I was shaking sometimes after I saw who drank out of it. I said, oh, I don't know if I'm going to drink out that cup. Right? But when we know better, we make them little elements that you got your own personal. Because if we, we are by faith taking this individually at the same time. When we did communion in my old church, it took about an hour. Pass the cup. Sip, sip. Sip, sip, sip. Pass the cup. Time for a refill. And we drank Mogan David. Come on, somebody. That Jewish wine. Come on, somebody. Because that's what we were told to do. And so you have to realize, beloved, Jude said, beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that you should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. For there are certain men that have crept in in their underwear, I mean unaware, who were before of old ordained to condemn ungodly men turning the grace of God into lasciviousness and denying the Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. We got trouble in the Christian church. I watched a video the other day of uh, Farrakhan talking to all the leaders. He made himself a leader and he talked to some of the leaders who were Christians. Some of them ain't alive no more. And we are the leaders of the people. No, you're not. Jesus is king. Jesus is Lord. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna follow the Lord. We always get in trouble when we want to be like the world. We don't want God to be king. We want the king like the rest of the nations. We want somebody who will be tall enough. They'll be brown enough. They got big shoulders. That'll be king. He said, I'm your king. And they say, we want to be like the rest of the nations. Do you know when you decide in your heart that you want to be like the rest of the world, you way off in left field. Well, that's what the world was doing. So what? Don't follow the crowd. Follow the cloud. Follow the Holy Ghost. What do you mean? Be still. Sit there and pray. Do you know if you set up a routine for praying every morning at your dinner table, at your table where you have breakfast, just sit there and pray. And if you don't know what to do, just keep sitting there. Just keep on doing it. Every, every time you get up, do it, just do it, just do it. And guess what? One day, God's going to meet you there because you're showing yourself faithful. See, God re rewards faithfulness. The old folks used to call it piddling. Everybody know what piddling is? You go there, sometimes guys used to call it whittling. They get them a stick, and they be cutting a little whittle, and they actually know they don't have no stick. But they sit there contemplating, and they're sitting there listening. What should I do? How should I solve this problem? And if you turn it into saying, Lord, what should I do? Where should I go, Lord? How should I figure this out? God, you have all the answers. I'm going to wait here until you talk to me. And then stop doing all the talking. Let the Holy Ghost talk. You know, it's cut, cut, cut. That stick is gone. Grab another one. Cut, cut. Come on, Holy Ghost, talk to me. Huh? Jesus, come on. I'm waiting on you. I'm to talk to you. Well, it don't seem like you're going to say anything today. I'll be back tomorrow. All right? I'm going to be here tomorrow. You going to be here, Lord? Well, I'm going to hope you're going to be here. And you leave and go do your thing. And then you come back the next day. Because you want to hear from God. Because how many of y'all know that if you don't get this thing from God, you're about to make a mistake. And how many of y'all really want to make some more mistakes? Let me see your hand. Who want to make some more? Okay. If you don't want to make no more, then you're going to have to turn this thing around. I don't know about you, but there's a whole lot of stuff I wish I had never done. And I guess what? I forgot to do it in God's time. Let me tell you this last little secret. My bishop, he said, every failure is a prayer failure. I want you to think about it. In the life of a Christian, every last one of your failures is a prayer failure. What do you mean? You didn't work it out in prayer. 
You thought you knew, but you didn't know. Should I buy the house from him? Should I buy that? You have to work it out in prayer. And if, guess what? If he don't tell you, don't do nothing. Well, if I start moving this way, God will show me. No, he's not. See, a lot of folks just start moving, and they think God's going to bless it. That ain't what's going to happen. You're going to create a mess. And then you're going to call Pastor Reed on the phone. Help me. I'm in trouble. I'm in jail. I've been there. I saw him have to go get him out of jail. I shouldn't have married him. I knew. I knew, but something told me to do it anyway. I thought she was the love of my life. I thought she was that. But she a, she a witch. I'm telling you, people that are in love can say some horrible stuff about one another. Am I right about it? My uncle Sibyl used to say that same lips that were so sweet. You get married and get to fighting, he said you want to hit it right in them lips. That's what he said. I didn't say that. Because y'all stop laughing. Because dating and all that stuff is sweet, but marriage is an eye opener. Hello? You roll, you you look up and and she coming to bed with something on you ain't never seen before. It's like, what is that? Men too. Am I am I am I too rough? So you got to try something. You know, somebody said I gotta go see if these horses work. <laughs> Sometimes you gotta put some trouble on something to see if it work. And once you see trouble, and they don't know you're trying to cause trouble, you say red flag. Because guess what? It gets intensified when you're cooking breakfast. And you, she's standing behind you with a pot of hot grits. Don't believe me? Ask Al Green. I'm so tired of being alone. Tired of being alone. Hello? Is, am I talking right? You didn't want to throw no grits on me, did you, babe? Okay. Pentecost or Shavat. Pentecost is the Greek name. Shavat is the Hebrew word, celebrating the giving of the Torah to uh, the Jews and the summer wheat. We celebrated every 50 days after Passover. It was marked by the pilgrims and came to Jerusalem all over the world to celebrate the event. The day of Pentecost was celebrated 50 days after Easter. The moon sets that, what day it is. In western branches of Christianity, church services on this day are marked with red robes and banners signifying fiery winds from the Holy Spirit. See how, we, see how people just say, oh, we're going to put the flags up. What do the flags mean? It means the Holy Ghost. No, it doesn't. Why you got this on your, why you got this lapel pin on? It means I'm a citizen. No, it don't. Having the genuine article means you are that. How do you know you got the Holy Ghost? You spoke with tongues. How'd they get into the Bible? Spoke with tongues. And guess what? Jews said you can build yourself up praying on your most holy faith. How would that be? By praying in the Holy Ghost. Right? We always talk about that, but you got to first of all realize you're righteous and you can do it. And then guess what? You can trust the tongues. Tell them, say, you can trust the tongues. When you can't trust yourself, you can trust the Holy Spirit praying the right prayer. And then when you get through praying in the Holy Ghost, say, I believe what I just prayed in the Holy Ghost. You come into agreement with that. Right? Because if you don't, the devil will start sowing doubt in there. See, you don't even know what you were saying. You don't even know if you heard that. See, your old church. See, your old church didn't believe in all that. Right? See, the devil will use any kind of chain at his disposal. New chain. Halfway chain. Rusty chain. Whatever he has to use to bind you, he will use it. But the apostle said, we are not ignorant of Satan's devices. It doesn't matter what I feel like. Keep on praying. It doesn't matter what the friends are saying. Keep on praying. It doesn't matter what the friends say. You spend too much time praying. That's all right, baby. I'm working on something. I'm praying because I want a God outcome. I don't want an Ishmael. There are things that I should have caught 40 years ago that I didn't catch because I wasn't praying in the Holy Ghost and seeking God. Oh, what needless pain we share. 
all because we don't take it to the Lord in prayer. Your failures are in your places where you didn't pray it through. Right? The day of Pentecost gave you this power, and if you don't walk in this power, guess what's going to happen? You're just like anybody else without any power. You know, got a nice sports car in the garage to do 150, but you don't ever drive it. Yeah? Well, I'm, I'm saving it for another day. You know, because I don't want to. I don't want to wear it out. I don't want to use it up because uh, you know you can wear it out. You can't wear out the Holy Ghost. Do you know that the Holy Ghost has been using people for centuries, and He ain't got tired yet. He ain't gonna get tired, but He be using you. Right? Let the enemy tell you something real stupid. Well, you know, you know He'll wear you out. Now I'm telling you something. You can preach yourself into a, you know where you fall out, and you gotta have some sense. You gotta have a good wife and say, okay, you've done enough. Y'all, y'all think she said? Just now I had done enough. <laughs> I'm just messing with my wife, y'all. I'm just messing with her. We need to understand that we have at our disposal the very God of the universe. He's deposited. Everybody say deposit. His spirit in your belly. He's there. He's waiting on you to prime the pump. He's waiting on you to allow Pentecost to come out of you. Right? While you're spinning your wheels, doing all the other stuff, you're just spinning your wheels, baby. Anybody ever been stuck in the snow? You got to, you gonna get, I'm going to get out rocking back. Woo! 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 And next week, woo! You got to go get a transmission, but woo! Praying in your own knowledge is just your own knowledge. Now, if you pray the word, you're praying a good thing. But when you step over into the supernatural and you start praying the mysteries that Paul said that been hit, has been hitting since the beginning of the world, and you start praying about the things that God wants for your family, the things that God wants for you as your career, the things that God wants for you in your ministry, the things that God wants for you for your health, the things that God wants you, God wants you to testify to somebody, that God wants you to move and do it, be a blessing to somebody. If you start praying those things in the Holy Ghost, those things will start coming to the forefront of your mind. And you can mess around and it will come up out of your spirit. But you have to allow the Holy Spirit and yield to the Holy Ghost. Did y'all get anything out of this morning? Right now, I want you to stand to your feet and just genuinely just lift up your hands right now and start out where you know in the Holy Ghost. Just start, just start where you know. You got a heavenly language, just start praying in the Holy Ghost. Come on. Come on, just pray in the Holy Ghost right now. Knowing that you're talking to God. See, if I start praying in tongues right now, I need to interpret but I ain't praying in the Holy Ghost. To, I'm not doing that. I'm not prophesying. You ain't talking to nobody else but God. Go ahead and talk. Go on and talk to him in the Holy Ghost right now. Go ahead. Yes, yes, yes. Keep praying, keep praying. I'll give you a secret. Start thinking about the word. Start thinking about the scriptures and what he said. Start thinking about the promises of God while you're praying in the Holy Ghost. You can do two things at once. Think about something and talk in the Holy Ghost. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, God made us fluent in two realms. You can think about Psalm 23 while you're praying in the Holy Ghost. You can, oh, come on, somebody. Just go ahead and pray it out. Go ahead and pray it out. Go ahead and pray it out. Come on, come on, come on. Pray out that need. Pray out the, say it in your, say it in your mind. Say the scripture that's going to your need and then pray it out in the Holy Ghost. Come on. Pray it out. Push it out. Push, 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 push. If you don't see the value in it, you're not going to do it. You got to see the value. You got to see the value. You got to see the value. Push. Come on. Push, push, push. Some of y'all praying for new beginnings. Some of y'all praying for new beginnings. Come on. Back me up. Back me up in the house. Back me up in the house. Ropa. Come on. Somebody push with me. Push, push. Push. Come on. Sometimes you got to birth things out in the Holy Spirit. You got to birth it out. You got to push it out. Hallelujah. You begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. Get over in the Holy Ghost. You start feeling those push and birth pains. Come on. Pray it out in the Holy Ghost. Back up the house. Push. 
Come on, push, 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 push. Hallelujah. Push, push, push. Ripe kustonde. O kendista. O kendista. Ropa pasta. Today is going to be a day of release. Release. Come on, release. 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 It's going to be a day of release. Release. Some of y'all going to get released to flow. Flow in the Holy Ghost. Some of y'all are going to get very good. Some of y'all are going to get very good. Some of y'all are going to Ha, 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 ha. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Shete ste. Shestom do sto. Preste dasta. Gesta tapa. O bekis toro ema. O brekis te hebo tosta. Come on, put your hand on her stomach right here. No, 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 no. Put your hand on her stomach right here. Put your hand on. In the name of Jesus, come forth. Ho pista. Oh. I speak fluency. Fluency in the Holy Ghost. Fluent. Christo, Froste, Bristol, take it back to Cleveland, Boston, Wome Este, Fluent, Torsten, Tons with Interpretation, Dostin, Friste, Baramo Kurstepa, Touch the Mind, O Bretista, Whoa, See in the Spirit, in the name of Jesus, O Krosta, See it before it happens, in the name of Jesus, Go Kistamba, Tosteneba, Ropisti Baka, Hallelujah, Comfort, in the name of Jesus, Comfort, Botista, Oh God, give her the words to say. In the tosto, soothing words, soothe it, Gusta. Breste but tosto, amaro steva. Come on, come on, let's go back a little further. Hapo tosto be, ebre kiste de be de de ba. In the name of Jesus, come forth, fluent, almost there. Rope kastira, propra sine fluent. In the hope of enas, oe pe kutia, egende kutia. Shopre combustulea. Glory, 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 glory. Hapro Kusta. 